Now, in my clinical practice, usually I start with guys when they're like feeling run down. We start with hormone replacement therapy, something like TRT. And then the second category I really like going to is going to be the growth hormone optimization. And in this category, we're going to talk about the two big ones, tesamorelin and MK677. Now, we're talking about two different ones because they hit two different receptors. Tesamorelin is a synthetic analog of GHRH. This is the growth hormone releasing hormone in your brain. Basically, it binds to your brain. It tells your brain to spit out growth hormone. Now, growth hormone has its own benefits, but it also then goes down into your liver, and then we get IGF-1, which IGF-1 is usually what people are wanting as far as regeneration and muscle growth. Now, what's interesting about tesmorelin is it's actually FDA approved for lipodystrophy, which is where your lipids are all goofed up. And it actually has been shown to decrease visceral fat. And visceral fat is the fat that is inside your internal organs. It's not the subcutaneous. So it's FDA approved as a drug called egrifta. And so if you're using it, though, for these other reasons, we would say that's off label, meaning the drug was actually not developed for this, but then they found that it has these benefits. Most often with tesamorelin, people are dosing at at least 500 micrograms, upwards to two milligrams. Most people will actually get a decent response around one milligrams. And the issue with tesamorelin is going to be, it's usually pretty expensive. Now, hitting the other receptor, which is our ghrelin receptor, or we'll call it the growth hormone releasing peptide receptor, is MK677. Now, actually... I broke one of the golden rules. MK is not a peptide. It is a larger molecule, but I stuck it in here because there are other peptides like amphimorelin, growth hormone releasing peptide. However, MK, in my opinion, is going to be the most superior of hitting this receptor. It's so good that it can actually raise your blood sugar too much because growth hormone does bring up your blood sugar because whenever you're fasted, growth hormone's responsibility is to keep your body working optimally when you're not consuming anything. So it's going into your fat and saying, hey, let's raise our blood sugar up. What's also nice about MK is that it's oral and a lot of people that use it will say, hey, I got a better night of sleep. I had better recovery at the gym, more energy, better pumps. It's actually to the point where some guys will tell me they take MK and they actually wake up kind of sleepy and groggy. Now, is that because they had a really good night of sleep or is the peptide like working too much? Is it working on your blood sugar? So you do really want to watch your blood sugar on MK. You know, dosing wise, a lot of people will start at like 10 milligrams a night. I think it's best actually for MK and any of the other growth hormone releasing peptides to take them before bed away from carbohydrates because when you eat carbs, your body releases insulin and then insulin and growth hormone are kind of working against each other. Now, they'll still get some effect with them, but if you're spending the time and money and you're injecting, like, why would you complicate things? Tesamorelin and the studies actually showed that you could inject it right before a meal. I still think it'd be better if you're doing it whenever you're fasted. So first thing in the morning, you technically could even do it before a workout. It's going to be different for everyone, and that's why you should be working with a medical professional. Category three are going to be our weight loss peptides. Now, I could also put tesamorelin in this category, but right now the king is going to be reditrutide. Now, most people have heard of semiglutide. We go, we, this is a GLP-1 agonist. A newer medication, trizipatide, aka Monjaro or Zetbound, takes the GLP-1 agonist and adds another action that hits the GIP agonist. Both of these hit your stomach and tell your body, I'm full, therefore we need to slow down digestion and absorb our food. And that really helps with your caloric restriction. And those have done pretty good. Now, the new kid on the block, which is still in clinical trials, is reditrutide. And reditrutide hits the glucagon receptor. And in my opinion, as far as energy and weight loss go, glucon is going to be far more superior than GLP-1 and GIP. And this is why we're seeing many people who take reditrutide are not only getting the appetite suppression and the weight loss, but they're also getting better mood and better energy. Now, the issue with slowing down your digestion, though, is a lot of people do get nauseous. You can have vomiting. You can be constipated. If you have Crohn's, colitis, gallbladder issues, pancreatic issues, then again, make sure you're working with a healthcare professional. And while there are other peptides, 5-amino-1-MQ, tesmorelin, like if I had to pick reditrutide, it would be the go-to for weight loss. Category four, cognition. These are some of my favorite. Many of you have been around for a while. No, I love nootropics. I think it just makes life so much easier when you have a clear brain and you have energy and determination to do and get things done. 
And in these, there's three that I really like. We have Dihexa, we have some Max, and we have Selenc. Dihexa is a small peptide that is derived from angiotensin fragments, and that's already naturally in our body. This peptide fragment, though, has actually been shown to increase BDNF, brain-derived nootropic factor. So it helps make more neurological connections in our brains. It's just like fertilizer overall for your neurons. A lot of people anecdotally will say, hey, I got more focus, better memory, mental stamina, and overall just helps decrease and get rid of brain fog. I'm very much putting that one in the experimental nootropic category. Some Max, I like thinking about this. Max, Max is a great peptide to really increase energy. It is a modified fragment off of ACTH, another normal thing found inside of our body. And it's been shown in research to be very neuroprotective, anti-inflammatory perfects. And overall, when you're under stress, it helps increase performance. There's also some studies that it's being used for post-stroke and ischemic conditions. Now, a lot of these aren't in the United States. We're relying on data from Russia and other countries, but a lot of people who use Samax really talk about its ability to help blast through brain fog and especially doing well in extreme circumstances of stress and remaining mentally clear. And then Selenc, I think more for the winding things down. So like really helps calm focus, get rid of like social anxiety, get rid of background worry, and overall take a lot of the edge off of other stimulants. So a lot of times people will stack Selenc with maybe some caffeine, maybe even with some Max, or maybe even when you're on Redditrutide. Now, again, I'm not recommending that you mix these things, but at the same time, you can start to see, okay, well, if Redditrutide is giving me too much energy, something like some Selenc starts to help out. Now, we also don't want to just like throw on a ton of things. Okay, this side effect gives us this effect. So then we use this peptide to get rid of that one. You definitely want to stay away from that. I've seen people go down that rabbit hole, and especially with these peptides being experimental, be safe.